Hello, welcome to Storytime at the Weathersfield Proctor Library. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian. And Bear especially requested today's episode because he loves books that rhyme and he also loves dogs. And so we have three books for you today about dogs and they all rhyme. Our first book is called Pig the Pug. And this book is by Aaron Blaby. Now, right in the beginning of the book, it says this book belongs to Pig. Hmm, I wonder how that can be true. What kind of a dog do you think Pig the Pug might be, Bear? Well, let's read the story and find out. Pig the Pug by Aaron Blaby. Pig was a pug, and I'm sorry to say, he was greedy and selfish in most every way. Oh my, this is not a good start to his story, is it? He lived in a house with a wiener dog, Trevor. But when was he nice to him? I'll tell you, never. You've got some great toys there, poor Trevor would say. But Pig would just grumble. They're mine, go away. But it might be more fun, Trevor said to Pig, if we both played together. Well, Pig flipped his wig. My goodness, he does look upset. <laughs> No, they're mine. Didn't you hear? Only mine. You keep your paws off them. They are mine, mine, mine. I know what your game is. You want me to share, but I'll never do that. I won't, and I swear. Wow, he sounds very determined. And with that, he proceeded to gather his stuff and make a big pile with a huff and a puff. <laughs> There's Trevor looking on. And once he had gathered them up in a pile, he howled from the top with a satisfied smile. There, shouted Pig, now you won't get my loot. It's mine, 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 mine. So why don't you scoot? But just at that moment, poor Trevor did see the pile was wobbling. Oh dear me. Watch out up there, good Trevor did cry. But the shame of it was, well, pugs cannot fly. <laughs> I guess not. Poor pig, he's falling off his pile of stuff. These days, it's different, I'm happy to say. It's so very different in most every way. Looks like Trevor has a toy. Yes, Pig shares his toys now, and Trevor's his friend, and they both play together. My goodness, these pages are kind of sticky, aren't they? Wild pigs on the mend. Oh, poor pig, look at that. It looks like he broke something when he fell off his pile of stuff. Well, that's the end of that book. This was Pig the Pug by Aaron Blaby. 
Well, Bear, I hope Pig the Pug learned his lesson. I'm sure he did. <clears throat> Our next rhyming book about dogs is called The Hound from the Pound. This book is written by Jessica Swaim and it's illustrated by Jill McElmurray. And inside we have all these outlines of different kinds of dogs. The Hound from the Pound by Jessica Swaim, illustrated by Jill McElmurray. Let's make sure we can see the pictures. In Manchester Square, in a cottage of stone, Miss Mary Lynn McIntosh lived all alone. The bedroom was cozy, the kitchen was clean, but the days were too dreary, too doggone routine. I'm going to pause and see if everybody can guess the rhymes. I'm lonely, said Mary, who'd reached her wit's end. Perhaps what I need is a four-legged friend. She hurried away to the neighborhood pound, where Sam, canine trainer, showed Mary around. All of the dogs are obedience trained, except the blue basset, Sam kindly explained. One look in Blue's eyes made Miss Mary's heart break. She tottered him, trotted him home. What an awful mistake. While Mary was fixing an afternoon treat, Blue wandered the house with his four muddy feet. He chewed Mary's bathrobe and peed in her shoe, then lifted his muzzle and hollered, Arr! The panters, the pointers, the givers of licks, the newspaper getters, the fetchers of sticks, the mischievous, marvelous mutts from the pound burst from their cages and followed the sound. Oh. Greyhounds and whippets raced in from the street, knocking poor Mary right off her feet. Siberian huskies blew in with their sled. Bulldogs and bedlingtons bounced on the bed. A Pekingese played tug of war with a pug. Dalmatians unraveled the polka dot rug. An old English sheepdog chased after his sheep who counted themselves till they all fell asleep. Retrievers lined up at the toilet to drink. Chihuahua swam laps in, in the sink. A bloodhound got gummy bears stuck in his snout. Sharpays used the shower to steam wrinkles out. Help, Mary cried. I can't keep all these pets. As in walked a dachshund with eight wienerettes. That was a hard one. <laughs> Two dainty daughters and six sturdy sons with wiener dog faces and wiener dog buns. <laughs> that was a hard rhyme too. Look at all those dogs. My word. The yippers, the yappers, the lappers of bowls, the afternoon nappers, the diggers of holes, the mischievous, marvelous, mutts from the pound bowed to their leader, the blue basset hound. Ow! Oh. 
arms full of leashes, Sam jumped from his truck, a sign to the dogs that they'd run out of luck. Beagles and boxers hid under the bed. Terriers trembled and pointers played dead. Blue gazed at Mary with sorrowful eyes, breaking her heart with his pitiful cries. Sam, I can't possibly part with them now. I know I can train them. Will you show me how? Sam demonstrated the tricks of his trade. Hot diggity, what a difference it made. The setters, the wetters, oh yes, even blue, showed Mary what positive things they could do. Sorry, I forgot to stop on that one for you. A mutt fetched some daisies. A Jack Russell brought tea. A Newfoundland rested his head on her knee. With dogged devotion, the rest fell in line. Splendid, said Mary. We'll get along. Fine. The sitters, the stayers, the catchers of balls, the hide-and-seek players, the bouncers off walls, the mischievous, marvelous mutts from the pound, couldn't believe what a good home they'd found. Ow! Sam stayed for supper of hot shepherd's pie. Too quickly for Mary, the evening passed by. What started as puppy love rapidly grew by leaps and by bounds, overtaking the two. Till one golden morning, Sam dropped to his knee. Mary, my pet, will you please marry me? No bones about it, Sam. I'll be your wife to have and to hold for the rest of your life. The wedding took place by the Chesapeake Bay at St. Bernard's Chapel, the middle of May. Poodles of Honor wore gowns from Paris and ribbons of pink, ooh la la and wee oui, wee. Oui. Barking, sit, stay. To the furred congregation, the minister read from the book of Dalmatian. Best man, of course, was none other than Blue, who'd howled with delight when the two said, I do. The healers, the squealers, the wearers of bows, the tennis shoe stealers, the warmers of toes, the mischievous, marvelous mutts from the pound echoed the joy of the blue basset hound. Ow! <laughs> the end. Well, I hope you liked that book. Oh, this was The Hound from the Pound by Jessica Swain, illustrated by Jill. Miguel Murray. We have one final book there, also a rhyming book about a dog. This book is called The Diggin'est Dog. It is by Al Perkins and it is illustrated by Eric Gurney. You might look at this illustration and try to figure out what this has to do with the title, The Digginest Dog. Oh my goodness, there's some more digging. The Digginest Dog by Al Perkins, illustrated by Eric Gurney. I was the saddest dog you could ever see. Sad because no one wanted me. The pet shop window was my jail. The sign behind me said for sale. I was tied to a bare, hard floor of stone. 
I could not even dig for a bone. I was living all of my life alone, a dog that no one wanted to own. And then one day at half past four, Sammy Brown came in the door. Sam took one look at me and cried, why are you tied up here inside? I've always wanted a dog like you. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll take you out to the farm with me. You'll play outdoors where you should be. I felt as happy as a pup when Sam paid the man and picked me up. He rubbed my ears. He scratched my head. I think I'll call you Duke, he said. Sam gave me a collar. He gave me a lead. We left that shop at tremendous speed. We went a long way out of town. We came to the farm of Sammy Brown. It was the nicest place I'd ever seen. A pretty white house in a field of green. And in the shade of the apple tree, a special doghouse just for me. Next morning, while Sam did his chores, he let me run and play outdoors. I'd never played outdoors before. I'd always lived on that hard floor. I'd never run on nice soft ground. Now I barked with joy as I ran around. Sam looked at me and scratched his head. Duke, you need some friends, he said. He blew his whistle, he blew a blast, and many dogs came running fast. I'd never met a dog before. Now I was meeting six or more. They walked around and looked at me they looked me over carefully. Then at last I heard them say, he's one of us, he'll be okay. One dog who wasn't very big suddenly began to dig. The others started digging too, but that was something I could not do. I'd never learned to dig in that store. How could I on that hard stone floor? I tried to dig, but alas, I couldn't. I wiggled my paws. My paws just wouldn't. I fell on my ear. I fell on my face. I fell on myself all over the place. The other said, Duke may be big, but he's no good. He cannot dig. They stuck their noses in the air. They walked away. They left me there. Oh, poor Duke. I'll teach you, Duke, cried Sammy Brown. I'll show you how to dig deep down. He crouched beside me. With his hand, he dug a hole in a pile of sand. I tried it too, but still I couldn't. I wiggled my paws. My paws just wouldn't. I'd never learned to dig in that store. How could I on that hard stone floor? Sammy sighed. I almost cried. My eyes and nose were full of dirt. My paws and claws and elbows hurt. I had a pain across my back. I knew I'd never get the knack. Sam felt sad and I felt bad. If only I could make him glad. We both knew I'd never get it right. Sam and I couldn't sleep that night. So when the sun rose in the sky, I thought I'd give it one more try. I wiggled one paw. I saw it could. I wiggled the other. I saw it would. I could dig with my paws. I could dig with my claws. I felt no pain across my back. I knew at last I had the knack. Sammy Brown looked out at me. He saw me digging happily. Good for you, Duke. Sammy cried. I knew you'd do it if you tried. So I dug farther. I dug faster. I dug and dug to please my master. I dug up grass. I dug up weeds. I dug up daisies. I dug up seeds. I dug up the fence. I dug up the gates. I dug up the garden of Mrs. Thwaites. Oh no, I don't think this is going where I think he hopes to go. 
I dug up the rooster. I dug up the hens. I dug up the sheep and pigs in their pens. I dug and dug. I couldn't stop. I dug up the barber in his shop. I dug up Mr. Rodney Thayer sitting in the barber's chair. I dug my way right through the town. I dug a lot of buildings down. I was having so much fun, I dug up Highway 81. I came to a hill. I dug to the top, but all of a sudden I had to stop. Right in front of me, looking down, there stood my master, Sammy Brown. Sam didn't smile or pat my head. He only glared at me and said, I'm sending you back to that animal store. They'll tie you to that hard stone floor and you'll never, never dig anymore. Oh my, that seems a harsh fate. I couldn't run, I couldn't hide. Dogs came at me from every side. And then suddenly I knew there was just one thing for me to do. I ran away from Sammy Brown. I dug a hole that went straight down. I left him standing up on top. I dug and dug. I didn't stop. How deep I dug, I could not tell. But soon I found I dug a well. Mud and water up to my chin. What a fix I now was in. I started to sink. I started to yelp. Help, I yelped. Help, 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 help. I could hear them way above my head. I could hear every word they said. One dog growled, he wrecked our town. This serves him right, just let him drown. Ooh, that's not nice. But Sam cried, Duke, you've been bad. You've made me sad instead of glad. But we're not going to let you die. We'll get you out. At least we'll try. Then at last I heard him shout, maybe we can pull you out. Slowly, slowly down they came, each dog part of a long dog chain. I reached up, I touched a nose, I felt them lift me by my toes. Slowly, slowly, bit by bit, they dragged me up out of the pit. I thanked the dogs and Sammy Brown, and then I started back toward town. I knew I had to dig once more to fix things up as they were before. That's what I did. I dug back gates. I dug back the garden of Mrs. Thwaites. I dug back the roosters and the hens. I dug back all the pigs and their pens. I dug all day in the summer sun. I dug back Highway 81. I dug back everything in town, everything that I had knocked down. Today, when I dig, well, I'm careful now. I'm useful too. Sam lets me plow. He'll never send me to that store or tie me up on a hard stone floor. My dog friends watch and wonder why they can't dig as well as I. The end. Aren't you glad he went back and fixed everything that he had ruined? That was a good end to the story, wasn't it, Bear? Well, this was The Diggin' Dog by Al Perkins, illustrated by Eric Gurney. Well, Bear, thank you so much for suggesting books about dogs and books that rhyme. I had fun, and I hope you did too. I know you miss all of your friends, and can't wait till they come back to the library. This was Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian at the Weathersfield Proctor Library. Bye till next time.